In this video, I want to show you a little bit on how I made the Firlaf Axe from World of Warcraft. It is mostly 3D printed and I added a bunch of LEDs and epoxy resin to make everything light up like this. After I 3D designed the entire axe, I 3D printed the translucent parts in translucent patchy plastic. I built this 3D printer a long time ago to 3D print translucent props like this in one piece so I don't get as many seams in my lights. All the pieces are completely printed hollow and I have to cut out some flanges which are there for support. I printed some of the other non-translucent pieces in lightweight PLA. Then for the non-translucent pieces I used a lot of split putty, sanding and primer filler to make everything smooth. This is a lot of hand work but it pays off in the end. Gotta get rid of all these to layer lines. My favorite spotty is Bondo Spot Putty. In between sanding and spot putty, I also use filler primer spray. This will speed up the sanding and filler process. I used some simple USB LED lights to test out my translucent parts. After sanding all my non-translucent pieces, I painted them and I used some airbrush to add a fake glow to the areas. I started with a light color first and just built up a bunch of colors in orange and yellow. I used the Iwata TRN2 airbrush here which is a 0.5mm nozzle and I used Createx paints. I got some fluorescent Createx uh, orange to uh, highlight it more. The core of the DAX is a PVC pipe, so I use this to stabilize the core and add LED lights and electronics to it. I painted over the translucent parts to uh, create this effect. This is an addressable LED LED strip. Then I painted some more of the opaque parts that are going to be covering most of the LEDs. You cannot apply filler spray or spot putty to translucent parts. So what I did is add epoxy resin with a little bit of orange tint to every translucent part on my prop. This will fill in the layer lines without having to fill it with any opaque filler. This is how it looks like with a little bit of epoxy resin and dye mixed in and brushed all over the translucent 3D printed parts. I built quite a lot of epoxy resin layers on this, both on the inside and the outside of the prop, with some fluorescent orange tint. These translucent 3D printed pieces are completely hollow, so I glued in the LED strips using a piece of foam to make sure that it is uniformly distributed entirely throughout the piece. I had to connect all these LED strips individually because the axe has a lot of different pieces. I used JST plugs to connect these pieces together so I can still disassemble the entire axe without having to uh, connect the uh, wires together permanently. As you can see here, I connected some wires to the main body and I divided all these LED strips up into groups to fit each segment of the axe. These LED strips required three wires. One for positive, one for negative connection, and one for the data connection. So each group of LED strips is connected to these three wires. It is a lot of solder work. Every LED is then glued in and packaged up with heat shrink. I wanted to add a little bit of tint to the blade as it was just plain orange. I used uh, my airbrush to add extra shading to the every piece. I used transparent airbrush paints for this. The Createx transparent paints are great for this and I also use some candy red to add more highlights. I added some different shades of purple, pink, orange and black to finish it off. Then it was time to add LEDs to the main body of the axe. This one was the most complicated one because it was so big and you had to get LED strips in every corner of the axe. I cut out the core so I could access every corner more easily and it's going to be covered up later anyway. 
I used some scrap white foam to build a wall inside the X so I could have something to fasten the LED strips to. I made sure this wall was perfectly cornered in every corner and crevice that the X has. So it wouldn't be seen from the inside, but it would still be uh, possible to support the LED LED strips on this. This took quite some time to get everything fit right, but it pays off later. Then it was time to add the LED LED strips. To get into the far point of the X, I added some iron wire that I could glue the LED strips to and stick it inside the edge. I used the adhesive backing of the LED strip to fasten it to the rest of the foam walls that I built for the X. I had to add some extra groups to uh, uh, make sure that the LEDs would cover the entirety of the X inside the spikes as well. So I took my 3-pin wire and added some extra groups to, to these points. With these addressable LED LED strips, you have to make sure that each group is connected in the same direction as the da data line allows, because it cannot connect in reverse. I used this 5 volt USB power bank to power all the LEDs. In between the power bank and the LED strips, there's an Arduino Nano connected. This will tell the LED strips what color to use. I uploaded a pre-made fire pattern to my Arduino Nano and all I did was adjust the speed and the amount of LEDs that I used. Then I tested out my setup by stuffing every LED strip in there and see how it looks like and if I need to change anything. So far it's just a test to see if everything fits in place and if I need to change anything and, and before I glue everything together. As you can see there's some hot spots of the LEDs inside which I need to cover up. So I took everything out again and put on some foam to make sure that the hotspots wouldn't be as visible. You can use packaging foam or any kind of other translucent uh, foam to cover it up a little bit more and make sure that the hotspots aren't as so it fits together. The core houses all the batteries and the Arduino Nano which controls the LEDs. 